Leah. This is Moss or Bob Moss. That's his full name, my bearded dragon. Yeah. Where are you going, Bob? Where are you going? He sees the plants. He loves plants. We went for a walk earlier today. Um, I am an artist based in San Diego. Um, and I do I do a lot of different things, but I would say I'm back. I would say one of the things I do a lot of recently is um, commissioned oil paintings, which if you've ever worked with oil, the product is wonderful. The process is expensive and fairly challenging. Um, you need to have a well ventilated area. You need to know your tools and supplies can be kind of expensive. <laughs> He's just moving all over the place. Um, one of the things that I think is way overpriced are canvases. When I was in college, I did huge, like six foot by four foot portraits. Definitely could not afford <laughs> to buy those canvases. So I built them all myself. Um, and I would do that in our wood shop by stripping the bands or using a bandsaw to strip the two by fours and then cut them into the sizes I needed. Um, I like working big. I think I work more expressively um, and I like working on canvas. I like the way it gives more than wood panels. Um, so yeah, I loved building big canvases. I don't have the tools now or the space. I have Florida roommates. <laughs> um, to build the stretcher bars, but I found that you can buy stretcher bars pretty affordably on Blix. Um, yeah, I think they're at most like $12 a stretcher bar, which to me is worth the cost. So I always build a stretcher by gluing them together. I didn't use it in this video, but I've recently bought um, a corner brace so that I get it right at 90 degrees. When I was building one of these stretchers, I didn't get the, um, I didn't get one of the corners right at 90 degrees and it kind of warped. So that I would suggest investing in that if you're going to make quite a few. Um, it just leaves less room for error. So in order, let's talk about what you'll need. Um, in order to build your stretcher, you need stretcher bars. I'll put a link in the bio of where I get mine. You'll need a staple gun, link in the bio, and then some raw canvas, raw cotton canvas. I buy mine from a local um, awning store, and that's what I would suggest. Ooh, we are feeling crazy today. <laughs> uh, it's probably because I'm talking. He's not used to me talking. Um, and raw canvas. Um, but I can put a link in the bio of um, some canvas I would suggest. But I like supporting local businesses, so if you can, buy local. If not, you can use my link. Um, and that's all you need. Oh, and some gesso. I'll put a link for the gesso that I use too because I like really thick gesso. Um, yeah, and then I will walk you through the process of making the canvas and I'll show you my finished product. Um, Moss is getting super anxious, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm glad you found my corner of the internet. You want to meet the people? Oh, oh, here. Say hello. Mwah. Thank you, Moss. All right, so I'm spreading my drop cloth. Um, yeah, I just always do that because I'm super messy. <laughs> and then I'm opening the package. And I order all of my stretcher bars from Blix. I've found that they're pretty affordable and they're super sturdy. Um, 
here it looks like I'm working with the heavy duty ones I like them I like the way it looks from on the wall when it's like an inch thick as opposed to half an inch I just think it adds that extra oomph so here I um, meticulously lay out the stretcher bars in um, the shape that I want them and this is just because from previous experience uh, I really it really sucks when you glue them together and then you realize that you've glued two that don't need to be glued together and you can't make a square or a rectangle so um really laying it out and planning it first is important you also have to make sure that the lip is on the top that little rim um, this is what holds the canvas away from the stretcher bar and gives it that nice taut um yeah stretch <laughs> um and you don't want to accidentally glue the rim on the back that would suck um i use wood glue i don't use any nails wood glue is super strong honestly from most of the woodworkers that i am friends with they tell me that the wood glue will outlast your wood so um yeah trust the wood glue and pretty much any wood glue is fine I put it in there's a little crack so you kind of squeeze it in the crack and then you sandwich the two pieces together and yeah oh yeah get wood glue off your clothes because like I said it's super strong you'll never get it off if you let it dry um and I'm probably gonna struggle <laughs> for a little while sandwiching these together it's super important that you get it right at um all the way together where it's seamless because otherwise you might end up with kind of a rhombus shape um so yeah here's me struggling tapping it with a hammer tap 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 <laughs> I don't know what this narration is. I hope it's helping you. Um, yeah, I'm not very strong, so I have to kind of like hit it with a hammer until it gets flush. You can see my little paintings in the background. I've been trying for like six months now to teach myself landscape painting. Yeah. And then once I finish, when I finally got it um, flush, then I wipe off any excess wood glue. Um, this way you don't end up with, you know, some drips dried and stuff. It doesn't look as professional. And I let both of, I do opposite corners, I let them both dry, and then I can squeeze together the whole thing. Oh, look at that. It's perfect square now I've measured out my canvas and I okay I like to leave I want to cover the whole back of the stretcher bar plus like half an inch I don't I don't want too much because um, then it gets messy and your folds are really bulky it makes it weird it bumps off the wall you can't fit it in frames so don't go crazy with the excess canvas um, but make sure you have plenty of canvas to work with so I measure it out cut a little starter stretch and then um, you can just rip the rest of the canvas um, along the seam yeah so I've measured both sides and I can see how it totally covers the stretcher bar. That's super important. And I kind of square away, make sure the frame is in the center. And then I start stapling. So I've got my staple gun. You don't need something crazy. You don't, you know, need super deep or long nails because we're just holding in a thin piece of fabric. Um, and I start in the middle 
and then I move to the opposite side and I try to pull it taut but don't go crazy I know some people use um, canvas stretchers like a little tool that pulls the canvas tight I don't use that I wasn't taught to use it because you can rip your canvas um, so just pull it as tight as you can you can see in the middle it's getting taut and then I flip to the other side and I do opposing corners um, sometimes my staples don't go all the way and I hammer them down and it's this whole thing of like you don't want to fold them over you got to make sure it goes in because if it's like really wonky and smashed it doesn't look good and it doesn't hold nearly as well as if it's flush so try to get them all the way in but if you kind of have to help it along with a hammer that's cool so then okay I do opposite sides and then I go back and I do one on each side so now I have three on one side boom I flip to the opposite side and I do three on that side as well um, working from the center out and then I make sure that I'm pulling it tight each time and this gradually gets the canvas stretched all the way around um, yes and uh, how much space to put to between them you don't want them like super close together there's no reason to go crazy but you also don't want it to be gappy so I would say leave, it really depends on the size of your canvas. Okay, so here I left probably like three inches between each um, staple. And that's probably what I would suggest. It looks like I'm just chilling on my phone. Oh, I'm fixing my music. And then... I'm doing the opposite side yeah so that's pretty much like where you need to get it with the staples and I feel like you'll get the general idea then you're gonna leave plenty of room before you get to the edge you don't want to go all the way to the edge because then you don't have enough extra canvas to fold your corners so be sure to leave enough that you can get to your corners and here I hit my thumb I should know better but you know it happens yeah all right let's look at those corners I'm going to show you up close how to how I do my corners. Of course, there's different ways to do it. Okay, so here's a close-up of me doing a corner. Um, I start by making this little triangle and I pull out on either side and then I fold down the excess so that it overlaps like that and the corner is flush. and then I throw a little staple to hold it down. So it's like this, um, the inside is held down by either side. You can always do a simpler corner, but that's just um, how I like mine to look. I think it looks cleaner than just fold. Well, it doesn't add as much bulk as folding it over to one side. So you just pull out the excess on either side hold down the center and then overlap the two sides until you get a nice clean corner. If that doesn't make any sense, then I can always um, make a longer tutorial on the corners. Let me know if that's something y'all want in the comment section. So yeah, here I'm just going to be doing all of the corners. All right, gesso time. I usually paint the whole thing with water first and let it dry and that helps get it nice and tight. Um, and then I use acrylic 
gesso. I think I bought this one on Amazon. I'll put a link in the bio for the brand that I use, but I like it really thick, so I only have to do like two layers. Um, and I have a large paintbrush that I like to paint it with. Um, you try to paint it as evenly as possible. You don't want a lot of streaks, and then you want um, the painting to be even, so you don't want um, parts of it to be thicker than others because then your paint will absorb differently when doing your painting. Um, and I do it one way and then I cross hatch it the other way. So yeah, you can just watch me dance and paint on some gesso. I really love painting gesso. It's like that nice mix of painting, but also kind of mindless, where I don't have to think about it. I think really hard about my paintings. I'm, not, I'm sure there's someone out there that can paint without stress, but I haven't gotten to that place, particularly with oils, because it's um, fairly labor intensive to get to that space where you're doing an oil painting and kind of expensive. Um, so the gessoing part is really fun for me. And then once I've gessoed one direction, be sure and gesso um, the sides as well, just so you can paint them. I definitely make, I definitely paint my sides. I suppose if you're putting it in a frame, then you wouldn't need to. But what's popular now for stretch canvases are mostly float frames, and then you would still need to gesso it. So rule of thumb, always gesso your sides. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. I finish it off. I gesso two or three times. It takes about an hour to dry. Um, be sure to wash out your brush between coats so you don't ruin your brush. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Alright, so that is how I make my canvases. If you have any questions, be sure and leave a comment. Um, the next painting I'm going to be doing is an oil landscape of the Southwest. Um, and be sure and subscribe if you'd like to see that. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Goodbye! Goodbye!